Well, nice. All right. So, but if anyone has a problem, all right, uh, not just a linguistic one, all right, but just raise your hand and we try to to help you in English, Portuguese, all right, or in no sign language, all right. <laughs> we'll do it. So, uh, very nice to be here with you this afternoon, in this month of January, in the middle of the holidays for some of us, no, uh, and to be sharing with you some information. And so as we can have uh, a good year ahead of us, no? We're beginning the 2016 and full of hope, no, as usual. And we do have a very challenging year ahead of us, no? Just turn on TV, open the papers and, uh, you know, the buzz buzz in Brazil. And so where do we stand, no? How can we get the best out of a not such a good situation, no? So that's what we'll be talking now in this afternoon. No. And uh, the title of the presentation I put is You can learn a foreign language at home. And by home I mean uh, not just your house. <laughs> at home I mean our country in Brazil. All right? Uh, yes. So what is our scenario? Now just before I, I say something about myself, all right, I just would like to give you a big picture. No? First, we're going through lean times, no? I mean, money is uh, not that easy to get, no? So, economically speaking, we're not in the best moment. Yeah. Yes. On the other hand, I'm sure if you uh, open any magazines, if you receive flyers, no, uh, you will see this bunch of kids very happy, jumping, no, uh, very happy, and they're planning to study English or any other language, but for our purpose, okay, we'll talk about English, to go abroad, study abroad, no? The golden dream, isn't it? To learn English abroad. And that's the image they sell of studying abroad. Always sunny and everyone happy, no? I mean, jumping in front of the school bus, oh, no, there's no school bus, but usually there is that yellow school bus, you know, so typical in America. And I've never seen students jumping in front of a bus. Do you jump in front of a bus here when you go to school? No? Uh, uh, what happens if you keep jumping up and down in front of a bus? <laughs> you know? Uh, but that's the image, and that's what our students see, and that's what they want, isn't it? They don't want that boring classroom, no? I mean, they want this. But that's the student, no? And he starts wondering, why am I going to spend, if I have to spend so much money, no, to learn this language, I want to invest in something nice. I want this, no? As I'm paying, I want to pay for fun. Learn with fun, no? That's the selling image in the big picture. Yes. Ah, here. Okay, okay, I'll go where, wherever you tell me to go. And that's you. No, I'm not a woman, I'm a man. I know, I mean, but uh, the teacher, okay? Teachers are like angels, angels, no, we rise above, no, uh, genres. That's the teacher, worried, the Brazilian teacher, I mean, no? Or the teacher who, who works in Brazil, in case you're not a Brazilian, no? So, we have the pressure, the economic situation, the media, no, putting, trying to sell, no, uh, uh, ex exchange programs. The student, uh, anxious, no, because he has to make decisions. And of course, his decisions can affect you. And you can see your income, no, moving <laughs> far, <from laughs> no. So that's the picture, that's the scenario we are. Uh, living. We have been living and unfortunately uh, we might be living for some time. No, I mean 2016 and maybe even 17. No? So, uh, I know, I, I can see, I can recognize some of your faces. No, I don't remember your names, sorry. Uh, but as we have new friends, I just would like to give a very brief uh, introduction about myself. 
you know? And in the sense, uh, I put here some logos. These are all institutions where I have been, you know, uh, in, my, in my life as a, as a teacher, because that's what I'm, I am. I mean, I'm an a EFL teacher. I'm just like, like you, so we're colleagues, you know? And uh, here's just to give you another picture so of how varied is the, the field of work you know, where a teacher can be. I've been through uh, language institutes, small ones, big ones. You know? uh, I've been in regular schools, you know, like uh, high school and middle school. You know? I've uh, university. I've been uh, working, I've worked uh, at university and uh, uh, institutions that like British Council that offer services, educational services. So I've been in touch with different kinds of people, different kinds of students, you know? but overall, they all want the same. They want to learn fast, painless, and preferably for free. You know? That's well. <laughs> and I mean, can't blame them. Maybe we as students would want the same. You know? But we are not students in this case. We are the professionals. No, we are selling our workforce. No. So, uh, what I want to do with you is, so introduce with a bit of the topic. No. Then uh, we'll go about this. the The focus is: Should I learn here in Brazil or learn abroad? No. I mean, when I talk to you, all right, I would like you to imagine you talking to your students, all right? Most of the, the talk, I'm talking to you, but uh, I'm doing the speech as if you were students and as if I were trying to sell you my services, okay? Some myths and realities concerning learning a foreign language here and learning it abroad. And then we, we close and, of course, the most important uh, part is uh, where you make questions and we can debate, all right? And if I can, I'll, I'll answer your questions, all right? So I'll put some things will be in Portuguese because that's exactly how students approach us, no? They come to us and say, teacher, no? Teacher, quero estudar fora. But well, put your chair in the, put your desk in, in the garden, you know, if you wanna go out. Quer estudar fora, né? So, okay, ah, yes, né? Que para Irlanda. Irlanda is very popular nowadays. I don't know why. No, or Canada. That's the golden dream. No, Canada. Quer para Canadá. Yes, okay, no? So, uh, okay, we're, we're teachers, no? Let's not cut your dreams short, no? So, what kind of uh, exchange programs we have? We have this academic, ones. When you think about uh, studying abroad, we can divide in basically two main reasons, all right? Academic ones and professional ones. And here's, I think, one of the catch that many people don't know about that. You know? Many people don't explore this uh, professional exchange programs. When I say people, I mean us, okay? Teachers. Um, Let's talk a bit about academic, all right? So we do have in Brazil, okay, some uh, institutions that promote, you know, exchange programs, okay, for academic reasons, for uh, students in different levels, all right? So we have traditionally, you know, uh, we had Ciências Sem Fronteiras, or Science with No Borders. Officially, it's not dead. No, it's just... <laughs> No, is leaping profoundly, you know. But it was a great uh, program in the sense of the number of people. I don't know if you have uh, uh, had any contact with that, if you had students or relatives that had, have been involved, that were involved, all right, with it. But at the time, uh, I saw that many students didn't take full advantage of it. You know, and then, of course, many teachers don't. Because if you wanted to go to travel, to study abroad, 
you had to do, you had to show some sort of proficiency in the language. And that's where we come in with our expertise. I'll help you so you can get, you know, the n hundreds of places. I mean, many, many students could go, you know. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, I, I know because I work at university as well, we had places, but we had no contestants. We had people not applying. I don't say, I'm not prepared. Well, I'm here to prepare you, okay? You just go there, sign up, you know, and then we take care of it, okay? But now it's dead as a dodo, you know, as they say. So if you went, you went. If you didn't go, wait. Uh, but not everything is that dark. The same institution, I mean, the MAC, our educational and culture ministry, is offering a, a program. This is active. It's called Idiomas Sem Fronteiras. Idiomas Sem Fronteiras is a program which is uh, directed to uh, university students, college students, okay? And uh, in this program, they, they, they can apply the institutions that are participating in the program. Not all of them are, no, but universities all over Brazil federal, state universities, uh, those federal institutes of technology, FATEX, they're all participating, and that means what? They are students, all of them, all of them, can take the TOEFL for free. Free. No charge at all. At the moment, there are 145 thousand college students all right signed up in the program because the universities uh, you you enroll the students and we sent they sent the their names to Mac and then Mac sent the tests and so there is almost a hundred and fifty thousand students ah Rodrigo they can do the test once yes they can do the test once and if they don't do well they can try it again twice not happy three times or thrice not happy yet four times and there are 18 students 18 students in brazil okay that have tried this test five times <laughs> they should try spanish no because i mean after five times but i mean what can we conclude from this who's paying for that the government or us, and I mean directly. But I mean, there is money for this. You know, if the students go try once, twice, you know, they can. They they just have to respect a, a a certain amount of time. They have to wait like three or four months. Then they can reapply for free. So, what does how does that relate to you? There is a market. These people, they're having the opportunity to take the certification, the TOEFL ITP. That means they may need, because if they do the test once, because they don't get classes, you know, they don't receive lessons. They receive the application to the test. You know, you don't pay anything. You can go there, sit and do it. But some of them have been coming to me, for instance. Said, so, teacher, uh, can you give us some private lessons, uh, can you set up a group, you know, a prep course, you know, so uh, that's where we have an opportunity, all right, so uh, that's something for you to open your eyes, and uh, it's ongoing, 2016, it's confirmed, all right, it will continue, all right, so just be aware of that, because that's somewhere you can benefit from, I mean, these university students, uh, willing to, to pay for some classes so they can get a good grade in, in the TOEFL. Um, but, ah, uh, I, I mean here, uh, Centro Paulo Souza, I put this specifically institution, I don't know if you know it, is one, they, they 
administrate the FATECs, Faculdades de Tecnologia, do Estado de São Paulo, and ETECs, as Escolas Técnicas. Now, I work at FATEC, I work for them, and we, we have this program, okay? And uh, so they, they, they've been uh, investing high on, on this because they want really the students from the technology sector uh, to master this language. I'll speak a bit more ahead. But nowadays, technology students that don't have English don't go far. All right? They don't. So they've been really, uh, uh, let's put it, they've been really open and supportive, you know, of English, you know. Uh, well, here I put CAPS and CNPq, which are other um, agencies, you know, from the government, and they deal with post-graduation courses. And nowadays, basically, all of the universities either in Brazil or abroad, request proficiency certification. So the students who want to take a master's or a doctorate degree, they must prove uh, linguistic proficiency. So that's also uh, a niche you know, for us. And the British Council, which is an institution uh, all over Brazil, I, I don't know if you were all from Sao Paulo, but they are present in all the states, and they apply the, uh, they organize the application of IELTS, which I'll, say, I'll mention a bit ahead, you know, which is another certificate. And many people call. I, I, I work for them as well, you know, as, um, as an examiner, and many people call the British Council asking for uh, private teachers, because they want to train for the exam, and they have a list at the British Council, they don't, uh, they don't sell private classes themselves. What they do have is a, a, a list, you know, a, a database of teachers you know, who work with exams. So if you are interested, you can uh, be in touch with them, you know, send your uh, information, and they can put you on a list you know, uh, of private teachers. Okay. So, uh, what I mean is, there is a lot going on in terms of uh, intercambios, no exchange programs, uh, offered by public, private institutions, no, and Brazilian and international organs, and there are others, all right. So, indirectly, they all help us because they open a niche in the market for us. Now, professionally. No, uh, I was in a, in a seminar, I was participating in a seminar, and uh, in this seminar, which was for uh, technology students, uh, they invited people from different corporate uh, areas, no? And these are ones uh, that were there. We have IBM, which is this gigantic company. Deloitte, which is a consulting company. Avanad, which works with technology as well. And Chigri, you know that uh, pipes you have in your house, you know? Okay, Chigri, which is a Brazilian company. And I don't know why, I don't know if I had anything else to do, but I, I, I attended all of them, okay, I was there. No, I was giving a lecture as myself, but in between, I, I attended all of these presentations. And two things that uh, struck me is, they were all uh, given in Portuguese, okay, but in all of them, the presenters, the, le the, the lecturers were in Portuguese, but they, they used so many words in English, you know, uh, the jargon, you know, and I was, taking notes of the words in English they mentioned. And then, at the end, all of them made it explicit because they were talking to university students. So the students there wanted a trainee opportunity, you know? And all of them offered trainee programs, but they said, you don't step in if you don't have English. Means they won't open the doors for you if you don't have English. 
They all made it very clear. Even a Brazilian company that is, become, that is a multinational, it's a Brazilian company, but it's multinational, and they said, we want to send Brazilians to our branches in other countries. They have around Latin America, they have in Europe, and all, there is one in Asia, somewhere in Asia. And they want to have a Brazilian there in charge. But that Brazilian must speak English. So this is just for you to see how important it is, you know. Uh, remember, I'm talking to you as a student, all right? So, uh, to start your professional life, to start working, making money, you know, you must have English. Otherwise, how are you going to start your career? So, quero, quero viajar. Okay, what's your passport? Besides this one, the document, your passport is your English proficiency. Without it, you're going to stay here with me in Sao Paulo. But if you want to go to Canada, Irlanda, or any other, one, any other place, you must speak this language, whether you like it or not. No. English is the passport. Either for academic reasons or professional reasons. No. And then, okay, if I have to prove my proficiency, ah, teacher, can't you give me a letter saying I'm a great student? I can. No. But I mean, who am I? <laughs> no. Who's going to believe my word, you know? Who am I? Unfortunately, we're living in the world of certifications. This has become an industry, the industry of certifications. And there are some people, I have a, a colleague in in the doctorate program, he's investigating about this. Uh, we are moving to an era where the diplomas might be no longer so important as a certification. I'll give an example. For instance, lawyers in Brazil, you go to university, you, have, you become a bachelor, but you cannot work as a lawyer unless you have the certification from OAB. Medicine is going through a situation alike. Teachers, there is a rumor, they want to have some sort of pedagogical residence. They want teachers, mostly uh, 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 kindergarten teachers, children teachers, to go through a period of evaluation every, you know, every three years, and then as you get more experienced, every five, every ten. In the United States, it's like that the teacher credentials. So, ah, but I did letters, okay, at USP, good for you. When? Ah, 50 years ago. And since then, what have you done? Ah, nothing. Okay, you are a bachelor. No, but that won't impress. So, they want the certifications. And no wonder they're not valid for good. All these certifications, they expire in a period of around two years. I don't know if you know that. All of them. Uh, these ones, yes. So, I mean, I have my Cambridge proficiency certificate, my CPE, you know? And when I tried my master's here in Brazil, they didn't take it. They told me I have to do a new test. Then I went to a school, I won't say the name, here in Sao Paulo, I did a very, very, very a simple test. I said, is that what you want? My acceptance depends on that, on doing an English test. Uh, didn't you see my curriculum that I'm an English teacher? I do English every day, more than Portuguese. Is that what you want to accept me? Okay, I'll go there. I pay, and that's the catch, you have to pay. You pay 150, 200 reais, I mean, I don't know, it depends on, on on the year, you pay there, okay, and the same day, I got the certificate, express certificate, <laughs> you know, I did the test, a couple of hours, I received the certificate, I went back to the university, and I said, here, that's what you want, okay, 
Okay, I completed one, she does, I do, they do, all right? And I got the certificate. My CP, all right? And the years of experience that I have, because I, I, I'm actively involved with the language. But that's the market, you know? The market wants. So, and of course, the industry is offering. So you have, you no know, Cambridge, IELTS is from Cambridge, okay? International English Language Testing Services. TOEFL, no, the American version, I think it's from Princeton, or Princeton is behind it. No, TOEFL and TOEIC. And I'm giving you just a few. There are, I believe, more than 20. Because you have certificates for business, certificates for doctors, certificates for engineers, certificates for lawyers, you know? There is an industry. Because you have to pay, no? But, and of course, so our job, you know, is first, uh, if you receive a student, to know where he should go. What do you want? Get Canada, okay, okay. But why do you need to go to Canada? Uh, maybe, um, Canada is not a good example because you can have both. But let's, Irlanda, né? Get to Irlanda, okay. If you wanna go to Irlanda, I think Tofs. They got toffs. Okay, the toffs, you can uh, give it to your mom, all right? Because Irlanda is not going to accept toffs. Irlanda wants IELTS. The UK wants IELTS. All right? But if you go to USA, all right, you have to take toffs. USA doesn't accept IELTS. Oh, but I do, I have the IELTS. Okay, just show it to the Queen of England. But to us, no. It's an industry and they're competing in the market. Okay? And that has been made very clear like one, two years ago, mainly because of Ciencias Sem Fronteras, because there was a huge wave. That was a market. Imagine hundreds and hundreds of brazucas doing the exam and paying. Paying? Uh, pain or the government was paying. So both worlds, they wanted those Ciencias Sem Fronteras students. So they shared the territories. They shared, no, sorry, they divided the territories. USA people, TOEFL. That's our market. England and its ex-colonies, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Malta, IELTS. So the student, he needs to know, and of course us as the professionals who are going to offer support, we should know even, we should know, uh, we should know better, no? Like, where and what you have, where you want to go, and then what you have to try, no? So we can offer them uh, the appropriate uh, service, no? Because it's an industry. Uh, here, maybe you, you are acquainted to this, you know, it's, uh, because you shouldn't say teacher, but I want to go to Canada or Irlanda, and uh, what, what is my level of English? Again, it depends. You want to go to Cambridge or Oxford, probably you should be here. You want to go to the University of South, blah, 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 okay, Woods, that no one wants, <laughs> the uh, British, uh, sorry, the British, mm, I won't say names, no, no one offend. But you know, to a not uh, renowned school, your English can be here. So that's another in information. You must know the requirements of the institution. Sometimes they require a very intermediate level of English. So then you know how much time you can tell your students, look, you have to study for one year because your level is this, you are here, and to the university you are applying for, you must be here. So you are a five today. The university asks for a minimum six. So for you to have this upgrade, you need to study one year with me every day, twice a week. So that helps you to prepare a proposal for the students, a concrete proposal. 
Not that thing, oh, you have to study for years. I don't have years. No one wants to listen to this world, word. Study for years, you know? Long gone are the days where the students accepted to study for like seven years to come to proficiency, which is what might take on a regular basis. But nowadays, people are living in this frantic rhythm of life, and they want answers. They want objective answers. So you have to give them. Uh, you want to go to the university uh, Stanford in the United States, so you must have 676 six, on TOEFL. How much would you score today? Ah, today I would score 380. Okay, so you need like two years intensive with me. And then you will be prepared. So, uh, to know the scoring system uh, helps know and the scoring requirements. For example, if you want to immigrate, I don't know if you've been following the news. Uh, I was going to bring, but I didn't. Just two days ago in Jeun, if you just Google, you'll find in Jeun, the Portal Jeun, they uh, published uh, an article talking about the Brazilians who are immigrating. Due to the crisis, due to the lack of security, the lack of uh, moral values, I mean, whatever the reasons, there is a wave, a massive wave of Brazilians who are immigrating basically to two countries, Canada and Australia. Of course, USA, England, Germany, Italy, Iraq, Syria, there are people going everywhere, but basically Canada and Australia. So. The immigration, nowadays, long gone again are the days where immigrants, like probably most of you have in your families, arrived at the port of Santos with their bag, now their luggage, without speaking a word of Portuguese, and they arrived here to try a new life, an improved life. That's how Brazil was born, no? Uh, this no longer exists, okay? They want immigrants to arrive with language uh, proficiency as well, a certain level of proficiency. In Canada, English or French, depending on where you go. If anyone is a French teacher, that's a very good moment for you because Quebec is really opening up and 70% uh, of the chances to get the immigration visa is mastering the French language. They really work hard in Quebec, I live there, so I can tell you, they really work hard on trying to uh, Frenchicize the population. They really uh, are very uh, attached to this. They really want the people to um, master French. So if you arrive there with the French language, 50% of chances of getting it. Uh, UK, uh, for instance, if you want to immigrate, you must be around a five. Let's put it like this. If you want to do a post-graduation, blah, 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 it usually higher. But for immigration, five. And if you're immigrating like a, a family, a couple, husband, wife, and kids, uh, one of them should be a five. The other can be lower. All right? Doesn't, it's not that both need to be... Uh, uh, proficient in the language. So again, if in case you have some a student looking for that, you should make these questions, you know. Uh, you want to, to, to go to, to do what? To study? To live? Are you moving alone? Are you moving with family? This can all affect uh, uh, your uh, teaching. As a matter of fact, there is even a new, a new exam uh, for couples, you know, the husband or the wife, and they want to test, uh, are you familiar with that scale, the common European framework, A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2? So, yeah, uh, it goes like this, A is the lower and C is the top. A1 would be our basic level students, no? 
they can spell their name. Hello, how are you? My name is Rodrigo. I am from Brazil. I am a teacher and I love Corinthians. Okay, this is basically you know, A1. There is an exam for A1. In the case of a couple, okay, a husband and wife, a couple who's immigrating, if one, one of them must be a five. The other has to do a test. You, but I don't speak English. You have to do it, even if it is to prove that you are a one. That's the test, believe me. I've been there. I've, I, I've done the training. It, it, it was an offense, a moral offense. Why am I going to make a human being go through that humiliation? Because I'm sure you've been, in, as teachers, no, sometimes you want to talk to a student and you see, you say, what's your name? Uh, how old are you? Uh, poor people, they don't know. Why are you going to make that, sometimes, why are you going to make them go through that? Because you have to pay, besides being humiliated, you're paying for that. That's a business. It's called IELTS Life Skills, I believe. That's the name of, of it. Life Skills. And there is another one for UK, specifically not Canada or Australia. For UK, uh, for UK, so if you have a student who wants to go to England, he's going to do IELTS. Okay, but his IELTS is, uh, the interview is videotaped, just like we are being now, or I am being now. All right. It's no longer just recorded, because interviews are recorded. But this one is videotaped. And it costs a bit more. I believe that IELTS nowadays, in Brazil, 700 reais. This one, for you, ah, but I don't want to be filmed, I don't mind. No, dear, if you want to go to UK, they are going to film your face. Okay? You have no choice. Your only choice is paying with Visa or MasterCard, all right? <laughs> and to be filmed, you're gonna pay a thousand something reais. Yes. So, students who are, the, the bottom line is, if you are a person, you are making your life, your plans, your life plan is to move to England, because of whatever reasons, you must go through this exam. So I believe that the person who tries it would like to pass first time. No, it's not that. Try again. <laughs> and then again, unless you have thousands of AIs to spare. All right? So that's where you come in with your expertise to help that person to pass first time. No? Not many Brazilians have at the moment a thousand AIs to throw away. Okay? So, mitos. Né? I put it in Portuguese because that's what came to my ears from students and parents. This is another public you have to know. You know, the parents, if you uh, teach children and adolescents, they're indirectly uh, your public. The public are the parents. You know, you have to cater for their, the mommy and daddy. You know? Ah, para aprender inglês, preciso ir para fora. And I heard that myself when I was doing my master's, defending my master's degree. No, uh, one of the ladies, okay, she said, uh, she said that. And I said, she was very nice, very uh, caring, she approved me, all right. But she mentioned that uh, she didn't want to hurt me, because that, that's what is in, in the collective uh, subconscious in Brazil. And I said, but uh, senhora, you are destroying my job because my work is based on teaching people here. <laughs> That's what I do. That's what I wrote about. Didn't you read the 200 pages? They are about that, making people here to learn the language. And you're telling me this? Of course, I didn't say it. I thought, okay, because... <laughs> But after, in the coffee, <laughs> I kind of 
voiced that. I made it, you know, uh, I made it get it to her ears. I made it, you know, because I couldn't go home with that. So, no? And to justify this, of course, if you say, really, here, remember, we're a family, we're from the same profession, but if you're talking to a mother, a father, a boss, those of you that teach adults, but they're corporate ones, remember, they're not your clients. The client is the company who's paying for the, the course. If you have a group of people from a certain company, remember, you have to please the human resources because they are the ones sending the students. Yeah? Remember that. Of course, daily you face the students. No? They come to you and say, Hi, oh, teacher, today I couldn't come, but can you give me presents? No? And you, in good faith, give him presents. But then remember, if you teach in a school, not private, no? But if you teach in a school, the school sends reports directly to the company. And then, when they compare, the reports that you made with the reports that were sent by the school, they will see that there is a difference. I'm telling you because I've seen that happening. And then the company questions the ethics of the school. And of course, the school is going to scalp you. <laughs> so, here I have some numbers. And here, sorry people, I like you, but they told me to be here, right? So, I like you as much as. Um, here I have some numbers. No? Let's see. Which number is this? Good. Oh. Ooh. Now this is more A2 level. Oh. Uh. I don't know what I'm talking about. You are talking, I'm just listening. <laughs> okay, let's see, what do you think these numbers stand for? Why did I put them here? To check your knowledge of numbers. <laughs> well, with the students I would. <laughs> they are. They are related to my life and of course to what we've been talking about. No? Uh, the first myth that you need to learn, uh, what was the first myth? Eu preciso ir para fora para aprender inglês, something like that, okay. Well, maybe, but that's not what I was thinking about. <laughs> but maybe you have a point, you do have. Um, let me see, okay. No, nine, okay is the number of times that I have been abroad studying, doing an exchange program, uh, intercombio, blah, blah. Six are the number of countries I've been to. And two, keep these two for a while. 1996 is a date. All right? That's the first time I traveled. And 2011 was the last time. Unfortunately, it could be 2015, but I had problems last year. Hopefully, if we meet again next year, there will be a six here. No. Why am I showing you this? And why? Uh, remember, I'm talking to you as students, all right? I don't go bragging about this. That's not the motive. The thing is, this was the first time I set foot in an English-speaking country. But by this year, I was already graduated. I was already a teacher. All right? And I paid for my trip as a teacher. So, how could I have become a teacher before traveling? According to the myth, that wouldn't be possible. So, that's what I tell students. I worked, I saved, I traveled. 
okay? And I worked as a teacher, saved my money as a teacher, and then I traveled to invest, to learn more, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So, uh, and this number two are the times that I was sponsored, you know, by a school or the university. Uh, but what I want to say is that uh, we, as Brazilians, you know, I was born not in an English-speaking family. My parents weren't uh, educated in this uh, uh, English environment. For them, English and Chinese are the same. You know, my father it was not Brazilian. He barely spoke Portuguese. You know, English for him was for another life, he used to say. You know, so uh, I learned here going to school. And with hours of, because I liked, like you, I read, I studied, you know. Uh, so we are living proofs that myth number one is a myth. All right? However, it's much easy or easier for the students to place the responsibility of his learning on a trip, on something that is far, sometimes imaginary even, because they will never. I mean, I work, I teach in a public school, and the passport, the document, you know, when I ask them, because they say, I'm going to go to Canada. Okay, do you have passport? 50 students, only three have passport. It's not part of their routine, you know? They, if I were in a private school, probably three wouldn't have passport, you know? So it's much easier to place the achievement, the success of learning a language into something that you know that will, won't happen easily or quickly or soon. You know, so the reason of your failure is because, ah, because I couldn't travel. Well, neither could I. Or you don't, you don't learn English because you won't uh, need it for your future job. Yeah, what's your name? Sometimes they say this to Juliana. Juliana, you're right. Although this speech was much stronger uh, in the past. Nowadays, there is a pressure, you know? But then that's what I told them. Uh, once you get a job in one of these multinational companies, these big companies, nowadays they are very globalized. And they send even trainees. So that's your chance to travel. That's what I told them, All right? I mean, when I was a student, I mean, we didn't have that. And I was in, I said in languages. We didn't have Ciencias Sin Fronteras. Imagine how happy we would be. But we didn't have that. So I had to start my professional life. I had to start making money so I could save it and buy, all right, whatever I wanted, be it a shirt, a car, or a trip, OK? But nowadays, you have more opportunities. The companies are, the mobility is really huge in the corporate world. What you have to do is to set your foot in, all right? How can you do that? With some level of English, you start here in Brazil as a trainee. Maybe in one year, they're sending you abroad. And then you have your international experience. You see? Number two. Lá fora o curso é melhor. This one. Again, as I told you, I've been nine times. The nine times as a student in different areas, studying English, studying methodology as a teacher, in language institutes, in universities, but I, of course I'm speaking for myself, but I collected evidence with the people that were around me, you know? I asked them, are you enjoying the course? Uh, no. And the course, I'm talking about the course, okay? I'm not talking about the life that you have, that you experience. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the classroom, okay? The chair, the desks, the board, the teacher, and the students. The classroom environment. To be honest with you, I didn't see anything that we don't do here. Methodologically speaking, we are as good as, or even better, 
I would say. I would say we are. Okay, because of some reasons. It's not because we are born that. It's not like that. Okay, there is a reason for this. So, but this is, if, it's useless if you speak like that to a student. I'm speaking to you because you are involved. But a student wouldn't understand that. He wouldn't process this information. He would say, blah, 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 blue, blue, blue. All right? So ask, force the, the student or the parent or the boss to reflect. Can the teacher there, Canada, Ireland, uh, Timbuktu, understand the linguistic reasons of your mistakes? Can the teacher there really know why you don't say there is, but you say have? Can he understand exactly why you don't say watched, but you say watch it? Can they really get to the bottom of the impediments that you have? Just ask. Uh, we will not have any fellow countrymen like Brazilians near you in the classes. <laughs> Brazilians, they are spread because, of course, they buy these products here in Brazil and they are sent to the same places. So when you arrive there, I mean, it's half Chinese, half Brazilian, you know. Uh, so chances of meeting a national, and of course, you'll be speaking Portuguese, blah, blah, blah. So if that's what you don't want here, I'm not saying it's not going to happen there. What about the books? No, uh, the classroom environment. Books nowadays, the publishing industry is international. How many times I've seen, I've seen, I used to teach here with Cutting Edge, a book that no longer, I don't know if it exists. I mean, uh, and the students there, they were having classes with the same. Cutting edge, the same book. No? And of course, the bottom line, here you pay in reais, there you'll be paying in dollars. How much is the dollar today? 415. Euros, 460. Pounds, 12. <laughs> you know? Uh, so you'll be paying that for cutting edge. And here, you'll be paying for cutting edge. Yes? I think when they go uh, abroad... I think when they go abroad, they think uh, not only about the course itself, but the experience they have outside of the class. And then uh, I think our uh, role as a teacher is to make them understand that they can have the same experience here in Brazil. Because I had my experience here. I, was, I went to the US coincidentally the first time. It was your last time in 2011. But I, I had been a teacher before, and that was my first experience. But I went there fluent. And I remember the guy, the, the officer, the immigration officer said, you've never been to the US? No, this is my first time. He started looking through my passport, said, your English is pretty good. And then I said, thank you, because I teach English, and I try to do my best to learn English here, to live up to the language. And so if you make the students understand that, the classroom is going to be just a lab. And then you're going to make them understand they can learn even more outside of the classroom. What's your name? Renato. Renato. So we can trade places. Right? You can come up and I'll sit down. Because <laughs> you just voiced what I wanted to you, in, summarize. You know, what, what, what I believe is the story of many of you. you know? And uh, uh, as you were speaking, I remember something. No, I forgot it. But uh, now what? You said something that triggered uh, about the experience. Ah, yes. Uh, I mean, I've been through that, maybe some of you. Uh, you go to a gym, all right, to do some exercises. And you arrive there and comes the instructor, all right? And you look at the instructor, man or woman, and you say, I want your body. I want to be like you. <laughs> Until carnival. <laughs> Because we look and we judge what we see. You don't examine the hours, the years of dedication, of training that that person that did, the, uh, the food, 
I mean, he ate. So the same happens with us. His students, they look at us, and they sometimes don't believe that we are a national product. <laughs> no? I mean, they don't know how many books you've read during your weekends or your holidays. You know, how many tapes, well, I'm from the tape time, okay? How many cassettes <laughs> you've listened? How many times were there, ah, 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 woo, 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 woo. I know. They don't know that. They think that things come easy. Because that's what the media is selling. A bunch of happy teenagers, high school musical, jumping in front of a bus. Okay, go to a police avenue and jump in front of a bus and see what happens to you. All right. So, precisely, uh, that's why, believing that, you are the living proof of your success. Because you are all cases of success. And in her eyes. Mito three, or three, né? So, let's say mito three. 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 Three is IP, né? IP roxo, IP amarelo. Me to three. Lá, everybody, né? <risos> né? Hmm. Aprende-se mais rápido lá fora. That's the other, né? The miracle. In, no? Learning two weeks there what it takes you two years in Brazil. Well, my stronger argument to this, okay, I could give the speech that you all know, you know, what's the point of going abroad if you keep socializing with Brazilians, if you don't make an effort to speak English, if you keep all the time asking your uh, most capable peer, ah, ask them, you ask, you know, if you don't try, you keep relying on that person, you know, this is what I'm sure you all tell. But something that can really make your student, or the parent, or the boss reflect is this the secret. How do you read this? Ooh, very good. So that's what you can tell your seven-year-old child, okay? You want to learn fast. Sex. Sex, Rodrigo? Yes, but it's not what some of you might be thinking. No, sex stands for two things. Study and experience. You have to sit your tush on the chair and study. Okay, you have to do exercises. I mean, handwritten, tablet, there. The technological means you, you think, but you have to dedicate. Without dedication, it doesn't come. You have to read, to listen, to speak, to write, to dance. I mean, but you have to do it. You have to come to classes. You cannot be a, 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 a tourist student. You must have a high frequency of attendance, you know. You must know what's going on. You have to manage your course. That's what I tell to the older students, you know? You have to know what's going on in this level. You know, what's the, the, the purpose? Where, where are you going to be at the end of that, that uh, uh, level? You know? So you have to know what's going on. That's your responsibility. All right? Now, uh, for the student, okay, you have to know. So it's not, you cannot place the responsibility on the teacher or on your parents or on your boss. Each one has its, his, its, uh, his, his share, all right? I have to do my job. I have to go there and I have to teach. You know, I have to know what I'm doing. I have to be flexible in the use of techniques, all right? I have to grade according to the level of my students. That's what I do. I do and I know. That's my job. Your job is to be a student. All right? And that's what is not said, is not verbalized, because that scares people away, isn't it? No? But that's the secret. There is no other way. There are many ways of studying, pleasurable ways. We can go out and have coffee or have a beer on a, 
hot day and we can do English and you can learn, of course you can. But I mean, students, you, you cannot be in every student's homes, you cannot, no? So the classroom is where we try, for those of us who teach groups now, is where we try to bring life into that environment. And they must be aware of that. Even in private uh, classes, I know that some people are teaching private lessons in pubs. I mean, no, there's a little thing going on, which is nice. But that doesn't uh, mean the student shouldn't focus on what's going on, you know, on the language itself, All right? Of course. Uh, no, just... And experience, basically, there is a, an element of time, no? Nowadays, there is this pressure that comes from, I have to learn, I have to learn, I'll be promoted in two months, and I have to be, you know, I'm a two, and I have to be a seven in English in two months. Uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Won't happen, no? You cannot promise something like that, because then you are putting yourself uh, at risk, you know, you say, this doesn't happen, okay? Right. It's the same thing, you know? like if you're sick, you know? I like this example, uh, and we go to the doctor, isn't it? And I'm sure you've been through that situation, or you know someone that goes to the doctor, and you like to tell the doctor what to do, you know? Oh, I need that, I need a recipe for that medicine, you know? How many of us haven't done that? Or, or have someone in the family who's done that, isn't it? And sometimes I have a cold, but you don't have a cold, you have a pneumonia. The treatment for pneumonia is different from the treatment for a simple flu. The pneumonia treatment takes more time, takes more pills, you know? You can be treated for a flu having a pneumonia. Next time I'll meet you at the cemetery. The cemetery is full of people that didn't take medicine. You get in the analogy, you know, if students want, wants, is not necessarily a student needs, isn't it? Unfortunately, we live in a world, in our educational system, all right, where we receive our students from. Talking about the schools, the regular schools, the universities, where nowadays uh, they kind of say what they want to do. I like this, I don't like that. Well, I'm sorry for you if you don't like it, but you have to do it, you know? So we come from a, a culture that is emphasizing a lot the rights and uh, playing down the, uh, the duties that we have. No? Okay. We work hard. I'm sure you are creative and you have tools to prepare dynamic lessons, all of this. But there is a moment where uh, truth has to be clear, has to be said. And if you don't do it, you can go to Canada, Irlanda, you can go to Buckham Palace and you will not learn English. If you don't put your back into it. No, that's the expression I want to use. You have to. And you, the student, not me. I cannot learn for you. I can teach you. I'm Tachi. Tachi. Yeah, and I'm a Renato student. Ah. Uh, I have a, a, a friend. She, she went to the United States last year. And she, she went to study. And when she returned back, she can speak with me in English. She couldn't. She couldn't, yeah. Oh. <laughs> she went to United States of what? Mexico. <laughs> oh, Brazil is Estados Unidos do Brasil, you know? The official name of our country. Yes. They go and return and you don't see any change. No? Yeah. No experience. No? Sure. Yes. You know, regarding what she said, I had the opposite situation. I had a oh. student that went abroad, uh -huh. came back, couldn't speak 
And then she decided that she wanted to learn, but not there anymore. <laughs> oh, so it's a compliment. She said, I, I didn't learn anything there because of too many Brazilians in the classroom, yeah. and everything was all about parties and oh. going out. But she surely paid, you know, for that. Yes, absolutely. But when she came back, she decided that she actually wanted to learn the language. And that's when she ah. learned, because she said, can you help me with that? And I said, I could before. You <laughs> just didn't believe in yourself. Because <laughs> first thing that I say to my students is that I wasn't born native. And I learned how to speak English perfectly. So if I did it, you can do it. Sure. So that, that's the basic thing that they need to realize yeah. before doing all the trips and everything yeah. else. I have to internalize that. Thank you. What's your name? Fabiana. Fabiana, thank you. <laughs> Very good. So to uh, summarize all this, please. So now for you as teachers. Uh, well, you can say the same for the student. This can be applicable to them, all right? You can use the speech with them. Define your professional goals. That's more for you. No, what do you want? No, I want to specialize in children, in adults, in exams. I want to be an exam uh, an expert teacher, all right? If so, get information about the certificates, the most common ones. Now, sometimes, even the uncommon, if you have a public, it, it may, maybe you're involved with uh, health uh, professionals, doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, they do have a specific language uh, tests, you know, because to apply for masters in Brazil and, you know, health people, uh, health areas, they really have to study a lot. So major universities in Brazil require uh, English proficiency because they do read a lot. So if that's your case, get acquainted with which certificates are available, where can they take them, how much do they cost, and how can you prepare them for this. So then you can plan your business proposal. Um, and then, of course, not all of us are into exams as professionals, no? And the students, they may have uh, weak points. Maybe they're good at speaking, but they're not good at writing. We're having, we're receiving this new generation, the youngsters. They're very fluent. They, they speak a lot, but they write poorly. But most of the certificates, and some of them don't even have oral component. TOEFL ITP doesn't have oral. TOEIC doesn't have oral. So maybe he's applying for a, a master's in medicine, and he needs to read and interpret. Speaking won't be tested, at that moment at least. So check no, uh, uh, what are the weak and the strong points. Uh, you should have a standard speech prepared, as, I, as I've been reinforcing it. No? So you can use it no, to your clientele. No? Uh, and then, of course, you adapt it according to the linguistic, uh, to the student profile. Linguistic requirements. Is it a higher level, a lower level, a student? Professional, I mean, is it a student who wants just, uh, wants just no, who wants to take uh, Ciencias Sin Fronteras? Is it a graduated who wants to be promoted? You know, is he applying for a master's here in Brazil or abroad? You know, uh, is he immigrating alone with the family? To which country? No. And financial requirements, no? I mean, uh, there are the, the, the exams, they, they really vary a lot in prices. You have exams that cost 150 reais and exams that cost, as I told you, 1,000. And even institutions, for, maybe in Brazil, big universities like USP, for instance, they say in the list of the documents, they say Cambridge, ta. Cambridge, you have flyers, movers for children, cat, pet, 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 pet. So which Cambridge exam are we talking about? So sometimes not even the institution knows. All right? So, uh, and sometimes I, I had a student, he, he was trying a master's, and they, they accepted 
TOF, TOEFL, TOEIC, and the certificate that is issued by Senaki. And TOEFL, 500 reais at the time, and the Senaki was 100. And then he went to Senac and he took it. The institution accepted both. So that, that will be a very strong issue these days no? of uh, economic uh, crisis. No? You want the student to spend the money with you, <laughs> paying for your classes. You know, the 400 reais that my student saved, you know, he could pay for the lessons. So, and I believe that uh, that's what I wanted to, to, to give you, you know, uh, to pass to you this uh, exam orientation because I see it growing and growing a lot. It has been growing for the past five years and it's been growing exponentially. Even though Ciencias Sin Fronteras is dead, people are still taking them. The number of students taking exams is really huge. I mean, now, even now in January, which is traditionally a, 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 a calmer month, I've been having calls on a week basis since 9th of January because there are people taking exams. Every single weekend there is uh, an application going on and people keep calling. So, uh, in case you... Uh, enjoy this area, I'm sure you'll find success, all right? And I do wish that for you. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, anyone wants to make a comment, I mean, say something, please. Yes. Eu gostei muito do primeiro, eu gostei muito do segundo. Um, I teach in companies, eu dou empresas. Uh -huh. E eu acho, uh, na minha opinião, que as pessoas uh, que fazem aulas em empresas, que têm aulas em empresas, enfim, e eu não acho, na minha opinião, as pessoas sabem falar inglês. Uh -huh. né? E tem, uma, tem sempre aquela pressão, né? Como você disse, ah, going abroad, né? Então sempre tem aquela, ah, eu tenho uma entrevista amanhã, semana que vem. Então, ah, mas eu fui para Londres. Então, sempre tem aquela, né, aquele comentário que ainda falou errado ainda. Desculpe, mas se você foi para Londres, no mínimo, present, desculpa, no mínimo, present perfect. I went to London. Aí tem que corrigir, eu went to London. Ah, é, mas por quê? Mas, enfim, eu sempre percebo que I've been to Canada. Eu sempre percebo que primeiro vem isso, que é o meu perfume. Né? Depois vem a minha bagagem, que é zero. Então, eu falo assim que é, muito, é difícil, né? Para a gente que dá uma empresa assim, é uma, tem situações assim que eu tenho que ficar meio que ou eu minto, ou eu não preciso ganhar é. dinheiro, ou é. eu tenho que mentir. Então, eu, eu tenho hora que eu falo, olha, eu, que nível que eu tô Em duas aulas, recentemente, numa entrevista, uma moça que queria fazer uma entrevista, ela tinha, enfim. Ah, mas eu fui para Londres, em um telefone, ah, foi minha indicação. Meu, meu speaking é melhor que o meu baile. Eu para Londres, fiquei até com medo. Né? Eu fui super fluente e tal, não sei o que, tal. Foi ali uma lista de perguntas ali, porque, né? Um, que nível meu? Eu falei, você tem noções de inglês. Você não tem nível, desculpa. Mas um, ela ficou meio assim. Eu falei, não posso falar que você é um nível alto, que você não vai que você tem uma entrevista com alguém que tem um pouco de, uh, de razão em passar você. Se é qualquer um, passa. Mas que vai ver que o seu inglês é ruim. Mas eu tenho isso, eu tenho aquilo, eu não estou vendo o seu currículo. Eu não sou inglês, tá? Então, tem aquelas pessoas toda hora que, ah, eu não vou falar inglês nunca porque eu venho estudando. Venho estudando, eu fico meio, sabe, isso não como, né? Uhum. Aquela pressão de que eu não vou aprender nunca, eu quero falar fluente, não sei. Eu falar fluente, eu não falo fluente. Eu não falo fluente. Falar fluente também me ensinou o nome de um garoto lá, que eu sei que ele fala muito bem fluente. Eu não falo fluente. O que é esse fluente? Ele colocou no currículo advanced. Ainda, ainda falei, eu penso assim, meu Deus do céu, né? Então, ah. sabe aquela, aquela coisa de, dessa empresa que não, não sei o seu caso de ir para fora, que sempre tem aquela coisa que você já mencionou, ficou um mês no Canadá, 
saiu daqui para um The Reader, aí voltou para um Hebe de novo. Então, acho que não deu certo para o Canadá. É legal, puxa, nossa, outro mundo. Qual é o seu nome? Débora. Débora. Mas daí, um acho que eu recebi esse workshop sobre pessoas de empresa mesmo. Povo de empresa mesmo. Ah, que é, povo de empresa é, é bom. Difícil. Dá uma tese, né? <risos> Very good. Uh, Deborah, I'll, I'll reply in English, all right? Uh, she said something interesting about the curriculum. No? What do you write? Ask, uh, again, make questions. Uh, if you feel yourself in an embarrassing situation, an awkward situation, oh, how can I tell the truth? I mean, how can I say it? You know, I mean, uh, make questions and questions that make the person reflect. Like, what do you put in your curriculum, in your CV, in terms of level of English? Ah, avançado. Okay, but says who? Again, says who? You must put what? TOEFL and the punctuation. IELTS and the punctuation. Or you put the letters A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. That's what you have to tell them. Because this is the international language. That's what people, and of course you put, I have C2 English. Okay, you can put it, but can you prove it? Prove it? Okay, some people, they don't have any paper to prove, but they open their mouth, and we know they do, okay? But uh, just tell them this, the market is not, no longer, uh, is being suspicious of curriculums that put this kind of thing. Inglês avançado, japonês, fluente, Tailandês básico, ok? Uh, ok, but what is the, the, the foundation of that, you know? So then the chances of your curriculum being selected from the pile are very low if you don't put, you know, I have TOEFL, I have TOEIC, I have IELTS, I have CPE, blah, blah, blah. They should try to have, and that's why you are offering your services. <laughs> no, I had a, this week, for instance, I had a different situation because I got a, a student, and uh, he called me and said, so Anat, can you help me? I have a job interview tomorrow, and I need to, uh, so uh, when, I, when I have to check the student's knowledge, any person's knowledge, well, we have a kind of standard questions you can ask the mm -hmm. students and the person to make sure which level they are. Mm -hmm. Like this kind of closed questions, open questions. And then if they stop at certain limits at certain point, and then you can say this person advanced based on these questions if you don't have the certification. But uh, he's been studying with me for like one year, less than one year. And then he said, as far as the market is concerned, you are advanced. But and then we had a kind of quick uh, practice, and then he got to the interview this Tuesday, I guess. And then he said, after two minutes, the interviewer said, stop, because I impressed it. And mm. I'm not trying to advertise myself, because we're all teachers here. This is for the good of the profession. But she said, can you give me your teacher's phone number? Of because course. said, after two minutes, she said, it doesn't mean that all the students have the same performance. But he studies a lot. He lives the language. And he was very afraid. He said, as far as I, uh, I remember, your interview is not going to take like 30 minutes. And then after two minutes, Wow, you got the English, more than I expected, and then that's the situation. But you have even written tests you can give the mm -hmm. students, and then that's it. You said you had your experience about your advance, but this is what you show. Based that's, your, there's nothing you can do. That's a, a, a very good thing. I mean, first of all, congratulations. And uh, the thing is, from what you're saying, your student, he was already in the interview, isn't it? So somehow he made it through the curriculum selection phase, you know, and that might be the issue. Some people don't even make it to the interview phase because of, sometimes the curriculum is badly written. It's, it's not just because of English. Huh? Sometimes the curriculum, then we go into other areas, okay, uh, layout, Portuguese, if the, the curriculum is in Portuguese, isn't it? The curri curriculum is not even selected and some companies, they, they voice that if they don't see uh, a mention there of a certain international certification, they, because they receive what? Thousands of curriculums for a couple of places. So they, don't, they cannot get to know all the people. Maybe if they could, in the interview, 
they would completely change their minds. But to make it to the interview, you have to go through the curriculum analysis phase. So that's what I'm saying, that it does make a difference, all right, having uh, this uh, uh, the certification, the certification that uh, proves your uh, level of English, level of proficiency. No. Life of it. Anyone else has a question or a contribution? Just a closing thought. Sure. I, I even think that some people put on in their curriculum uh, fluent English. Hey. Maybe they don't have, but I'll put, maybe they will call me. I remember once the director told me I received lots of uh, CVs here and then they put fluent English and then I get the chance to interview. They have just intermediate, intermediate <laughs> English because they want to be selected and they say, Maybe it's my English is enough for the op opening, and then I'll, I'll try to put fluent. Yeah. Fluent is a very open. How do you define fluent? Exactly, English? fluent. You can be fluent at A1 level if you can count from one to ten and sing the alphabet song and say and and ask for a burger at McDonald's. All right, uh, you are fluent. Fluent is not the word. No, because you can be fluent at a very low level. Um, I, I, mean, I wouldn't be able to speak even in, in Portuguese about, for instance, cooking. I, I can't cook, you know. I like to eat, but I can't cook. So don't come to me and say about those uh, actions that take place in the kitchen. For me, the kitchen is a twilight zone, you know. I just go into when they say, jantar tá pronto, then I go. <laughs> All right. So I can't. The same goes for mechanics, you know, car mechanics. You know, I know how to drive. I sit and drive. You know, so or for technology, I, I don't know if anyone here is a as an expert in computers. But I mean, when my computer crashed, I just want it fixed. I don't want that speech. Oh, because you have a problem in the RAM in the motherboard. I mean, uh, fix how much and how long does it take? All right. So I, I I'm not fluent in that area. I cannot keep a conversation. The same goes for teaching, isn't it? No, I'm sure when you say that you do, what you do, people say, ah, oh. and then when you start talking about the, <laughs> the routine, people go, oh, okay. <laughs> no, because people are not involved in the area, so we are not fluent in all sections, sectors of life, all right? So fluent is really not a good word to put in a curriculum. Right? Ah, yes. Ah, não? Eu volto. Eu tenho que ficar aqui. Tem algum site que a gente possa ter essa informação? Qual é o melhor? Por exemplo, quando você falou, hoje me surpreendeu. Não sabia que Cambridge não é aceito na rua dos Estados Unidos. Hum. Então, assim, aonde será aceito? Quais são as empresas? Existe alguma onde a gente pode realmente provar para o aluno essa informação? É. Bom, vou te responder em português, então. Para fazer a sua vida mais simples, é mais fácil se você tem um aluno que vem até você, ok? E ele vem com o discurso, ah, eu quero ir para o Canadá. Então, de novo, você fala, você quer ir para o Canadá para quê? Para onde no Canadá? Né? Para a parte francesa, para a parte é, anglo, né? É, para onde você quer ir? E você quer ir para quê? Você quer ir para morar? Você quer ir para estudar? Quer ir para estudar? É. Para qual universidade? Daí você faz ele entrar no site então, da universidade e a universidade tem. For para imigrar, tem o site do, do o Immigration Board, não é? Ele entra, dele, entendeu? Você faz ele vir, entendeu? Com a informação, claro, pede para imprimir, se for possível, né? E daí vem o. Porque senão você vai ficar louca, porque você vai dar aula para vários. Mas hum. se você tem uma escola. Se você tem uma escola, você tem que optar por um deles. Ou você trabalha com e por que, que você tem que optar? Qual que foi o critério para você optar? O seu público... Porque na hora que você vai fazer a opção, você fez, tá, você fez uma pesquisa com os estudantes. Tá? E a maioria lá é pró-América. Então, você já pode meio que deixar o IELTS de lado. Né? Ou então você vai pesquisar, né? vai no, na, na American Council, tem, o, tem o, a Câmara de Comércio, e eles têm... É. O British, o British Council vai te dar todas as informações. 
entendeu? Então, essas agências de, de fomento, esses órgãos públicos dos países, eles têm, né? Eles aparentemente são neutros nesse sentido, né? É, para algumas coisas, não. Você pode até prestar o Cambridge nos Estados Unidos, mas se você quiser estudar na Inglaterra, entendeu? É, ou pode ser que tenha uma faculdade lá nos Estados Unidos que aceite o Cambridge, ou alguma na Inglaterra que aceite o TOEFL, ou universidades nos Estados Unidos que tem um diploma próprio. Tem faculdade que tem a sua própria... É, eu estava lá em na São Francisco, eu tinha um colega, né, tailandês, ele ia para Golden Gate University. Olha o naipe. Desculpa. E o inglês dele era awful. Não dá para entender. Eu não sabia se ele falava tailandês ou inglês. Sabe que você está falando em que língua? Sabe como você fica naquele impasse? E ele estudava lá, fazia jogos digitais, games, essas coisas super high tech. Eu falei, eu claro, perguntando. Sempre pergunte. E você tem algum critério de inglês para entrar nessa Golden Gate? Qual que é o procedimento? É TOEFL? Ele, não, eles aplicam uma prova própria. A prova própria deve ser o boleto. <risos> Pagou o boleto, né? Entrou. Se inglês é ótimo. <risos> Se ele está feliz? Resumindo. Sim. Como você disse que é um business, né? É uma máquina de fazer business. Yes. Não, Nesse, nessas certificações, não. Não? Não, assim, claro, quem tem o CPE, all right, if you have a CPE, é claro, é um, you have a CPE, ok? You are a CPE, good for you. Mas pode pegar o CPE, moldura na parede, né? Tira uma foto, carrega ele no seu celular, all right? Mas para entrar nessa faculdade, não serve. Eles querem que você faça lá o, o Golden Gate Certification. Supõe-se que quem tem o CPI faça o Golden Gate Certification, né? Hands down, <risos> ok? Uh, mas essa é uma coisa interessante também, outro discurso, devia ter posto isso para vocês. Uh, as pessoas acham, porque elas têm um CPI, que elas podem fazer tudo. Conhecer a língua não significa ir bem no exame. É que nem o vestibular, eles são cheios de technicalities, pegadinhas, timing. Você tem que fazer a redação em 20 minutos. Eu escrevo bem, mas não em 20 minutos. Em duas horas, talvez. Ou em dois dias. All right? Sabe? Uh, entendeu? Eu falo bem, mas eu não sei falar de novo. Eles adoram pôr aqueles textos sobre passarinho. Tudo bem, I love birds, mas eu não entendo muito bem de, desse, desse mundo aí. Eu não vou saber falar. Então, o exame é cheio de pegadinhas, e é isso que a gente ensina para eles. Entendeu? Nesses prep courses, você não ensina language, ok? It's taken for granted, né? Você assume que a pessoa está vindo com um determinado nível. Num prep, você ensina techniques, exam techniques, all right? Se ele precisa de um... você fala assim, olha, eu vou prestar o exame mês que vem. Ok, então vou te dar exam techniques. Se você vê que o inglês dele está lá embaixo, você já fala, olha... Exam Techniques eu te ensino. Agora, você precisaria, para você te atingir essa nota que você precisa, você vai precisar de um ano de inglês, de language. E depois a gente volta a conversar sobre o exame. Né? É que as pessoas têm muito... Os mitos são muito fortes. A nossa luta é contra esses mitos. Eles detonam com a nossa carreira. Yes. O meu está lá definitivamente useless. Porque meu CPI, meu CPI eu tirei em 1996. O que, que eu faço com ele? Mostra para minha mãe. Ela infla. Nem sabe o que, que é, né? O que, que é isso? É um diploma. Ah, mais um! É um diploma. Mas. É a mesma coisa que você está falando, serve para o Celta? Ah. Não, o Celta é prof, é prof, é professional, não é? Mas ele pode cair na mesma categoria que uma graduação, né? Você é formado em letras há 20 anos e não fez nada, não trabalhou na área. 
a pessoa, vai te, vai, a pessoa que estiver te entrevistando, se você chegar no, na, na fase da interview, ela vai te questionar sobre isso, né? Se você tirou o seu Celta 20 anos atrás e não fez nada, ela vai te questionar o que, que você fez nesse tempo, né? Mas, a princípio, ele não tem, não tem oficialmente prazo de validade, como TOEFL, TOEIC e IELTS. Não. Ok? Ah, bem, quem quiser mais perguntas, eu respondo em off. Now we have to close. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.